So, how's it going? My name is Greg, and uh, as I mentioned, I'm doing, as Atar mentioned, I'm doing a speech today on researching and presenting. Uh, so, um, it was the fall of 2017. The Toronto Blue Jays had just missed the playoffs, and uh, my wife and I decided to go on a behind the scenes tour of the Rogers Center. We're both huge baseball fans. And uh, at the beginning of the tour, um, they ask you sort of warm up questions just to get you into the tour. And uh, on this particular day, they asked us what we do for a living, and we said we were in finance and IT, respectively. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, during a break in the tour, the tour guide, who is a bright young college kid, very excitable young college kid, approached us and he asked us if either of us had heard of this amazing new thing called the blockchain. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, naturally being the you know, informed people that we are, we kind of shrugged and gave him a blank stare before scurrying off to the batting cages to pose for selfies. Um, and I didn't really hear the word blockchain again until a few months later, around Christmas, when we had the whole Bitcoin uh, craze. So <clears throat> most of us have probably heard of Bitcoin and Ethereum and some of the other cryptocurrencies like Litecoin by now, uh, and hopefully haven't really lost too much money investing in it before the big Bitcoin crash about a year ago. Um, but um, the uh, word blockchain hasn't really made its way into the, the everyday vernacular. Uh, so blockchain is basically the underlying uh, technology that underpins all these digital, digital currencies. Um, so uh, most of us think of Bitcoin as sort of a fad that's already come and gone. Uh, and that might be true for the digital, digital currencies themselves, but I think the underlying blockchain technology is here to stay. Um, and will likely have a big impact on all of us in this room within the not so distant future. So um, in my industry, which is finance, I've had the privilege of attending a few seminars on blockchain and I've usually come away from these seminars a little bit dazed and confused, in part because the te technology is so new and constantly evolving. Um, but then I came across a, a TED talk on YouTube uh, delivered by Katrina Warburg, who's a technology and blockchain expert in San, San Francisco. Um, and I, ha I finally had an aha moment where I finally you know, grasped the concept of what the blockchain is. And um, I have to tell you, I was kind of blown away. So, <clears throat> um, now you might have already heard some people say that the blockchain is going to be the biggest thing to come along since the internet, and that's a pretty big statement, uh, but I'll try my best in the next five to seven minutes to explain how that might be the case. So nowadays, whenever we want to, we want to research a topic, we can do one of several things. We can talk to a knowledgeable friend, uh, we can go to the public library and borrow a book, uh, or naturally what most of us do nowadays is we hop on the internet and, and Google a topic where we'll get a list of links to choose from. But all these different resources provide us with slightly different versions of the truth because there's so many people, so many books, and so many websites to choose from. And then along came Wikipedia, which is also a website, but it's one that enough of us use uh, that it, it's, it's uh, become almost a singular resource that provides us with maybe not the absolute tr truth, but about as close to the actual truth or the absolute truth that, that we're going to get. Because while there's no central authority um, that vets and verifies every single entry in Wikipedia, it's updated by people like you and me with knowledge about any given topic. Uh, and so there's enough independent pairs of eyes verifying it that we trust it. Now imagine if this the same concept was applied to financial transactions. So, uh, you know, um, currently we all keep our own individual financial records, our own sort of different versions of the truth. Now let's just say Joash lends me five bucks. Uh, that's gonna be pretty easy to remember for both of us, but let's just say Joash and I go into business together. Over the course of several hundreds of transactions um, and, you know, several weeks and, and months later, by the end of the year, there's a pretty decent chance that we could be you know, even if we're, the, we're both the best uh, record keepers in the world, there's a pretty decent chance that his record of what I owe him and my record of what I owe him are gonna be slightly different. Now, businesses go through this every day. Um, you know, a company like Walmart buys inventory from Reebok, let's say, and at the end of the year, uh, you know, thousands of transactions later, Walmart says, Reebok, you owe me X, but Walmart says, no, I only owe you Y. Now imagine if instead there was one, you know, all the world's financial transactions were in one place. 
In other words, instead of Walmart keeping its own set of financial records, and Reebok keeping its own set of financial records, there is one universal le ledger up in the cloud that stored all of the world's, um, all the world's financial records. And for privacy, you only had access to those transactions that you par participated in. That, in essence, is the blockchain. Mm -hmm. It's a method of digital record keeping um, where, <clears throat> uh, where transactions are logged in digital blocks. So unlike any other digital ledger that we use today, um, it's, there's, it's decentralized, meaning there's no central authority that sort of regulates uh, every transaction um, and records every transaction. Instead, like Wikipedia, it's updated by people like you and I who participate uh, in, in transactions. Um, and so we can almost think of it as a public database that's updated by the public. And like, Wiki like Wikipedia, there's enough independent pairs of eyes reviewing every transaction that we trust it. Now, the blockchain is, um, because it's not regulated by a government authority, as I mentioned, it doesn't really run on traditional money, but instead it runs, it runs on digital currencies like Bitcoin. Uh, and because of that, it's also lightning fast, because there's no bank to vet every transaction, you know, charge us exorbitant transaction fees, and just bog the system down in the process. <clears throat> Um, now, the blockchain might have started as a financial application, but it's already made its way into several other uses, uh, including in the, um, uh, in the medical industry, in fact, uh, where uh, it's used as sort of a single and safeguarded database of a person's medical history, where it's updated by all the doctors that a patient might have seen over the course of his life. Uh, it's also used in the food industry to track a food item as it makes its way through the supply chain. Mm -hmm. Uh, to make sure that it passes a bunch of safety protocol protocols as it goes along. It's even been used in Moscow to help tally voting results because concerns over government manipulation have encouraged the use of the blockchain to uh, lend transparency to the voting process. And also because at any time a user can go down the chain and audit the voting results to ensure that um, you know, they're authentic and accurate. So I hope I've given you all some basic insight into this exciting new technology and how ingenious and yet simple it would be to have all the world's transactions reside in one place up in the cloud. As an accountant, it also threatens to put me out of a job. Um, <laughs> but so do a lot of the other worlds, a lot of the other disruptive technologies that we're hearing about these days, like AI and what have you. Uh, some of the world's most intelligent people are working in the blockchain as we speak. Uh, from Silicon Valley startups to large banks and retailers to the Blockchain Research Institute that just popped up next to my workplace in downtown Toronto. And if the blockchain gets implemented on a large scale in any of the ways that I've just described, I think it has the potential to drastically change the way we transact with each other in the future. Thanks very much.